This video is going to talk about a simple JavaScript carousel that I created. Uh, some people call these slideshows. What it allows you to do is have a bunch of objects and only display one at a time and cycle through them. So what I'm going to do is go and walk through how this code works, do some demos of it, and show you all how to use it, etc. There is a bit of a guide that I wrote that might help some of you all. If you don't care about the video and just want the code, this is going to be in the description. I'll probably have it just saved as a text file online, and you can just copy and paste the code into your own thing and then go. As for the files, these are the two files I'm working with right now. This carousel file, this includes all the code to make the carousel work and then an HTML file uh, that's just going to be help demoing it. Alright, so let's get right into this. This is the HTML file. As you can see, it's very blank right now. This is it. Um, you don't need to use CSS at all. This is just centering everything on screen um, just to make this tutorial a little more readable. The first thing you'll notice is down here, right before my body tag closes, I load in my JS file that includes my object for my carousel. If you don't want to use two files like I'm doing now, just copy all of this code and put it in inside these script tags right here. Uh, and then of course get rid of the source and just have that at the end of your body. You can have it in the header, just make sure that your DOM is completely loaded. So you're going to have to do some kind of event listener for that uh, to make sure everything is loaded first before you run this script. Because it does look through your code uh, to see which elements have certain classes on them, etc. So how does this work? Let's start off with a very simple example. I'm going to make a few span tags and all I put in here was some numbers and let's go ahead and refresh. So one, two, three. But what if you wanted each one of these numbers to be in a slideshow or a carousel? So it went one, it only showed one and then you click next, it only showed two, only showed three, etc. So to do that, how my carousel file works is anything with the class of carousel, it's going to turn into a carousel. So all you have to do is go to any element that you want to turn into a carousel and add carousel class like so. So just adding this and then adding it to this one as well, now these two are going to be automatically put into a carousel. This works with any other element and I'll show you that here in the future but for now let's make all of these three numbers into a carousel. So go back refreshing still doesn't work that's because we have to have an object now. So let's go down here and have another script tag and simply write out var and then give your carousel a name. So this one, it would make sense to name it numbers or something or my carousel numbers, carousel, whatever you want to name it and then type out new carousel. So carousel right here is our object name. So if we go back to here, this is the carousel it's referring to right here. So don't change this name. This is the object. All right, so that's it. Now we go back to here and refresh. And now you'll only see one showing up. Well, now how do we get to two? How do we get to three, etc.? So we're going to need buttons or some kind of event to call our next function. So this is when I want to start talking about the JS file. So first things first, you'll notice the carousel has a container ID. We don't have one right here. So if you don't specify a wrap around your carousel, again, I'll talk about this a little later, so don't worry if it's confusing now. But if you have nothing in here, then it's going to use the entire body of the HTML as the wrapper, meaning is it's going to look through the body of the entire HTML, so all of this, and it's going to look for everything that has the class of carousel, which would be this, this, and this. If we had carousel on this, header right here as well, class carousel right here, then it would also grab and put that into our carousel. Uh, if we had buttons that had class carousel on them, it would throw them into there as well and puts them into an array called slides. Now total here is just going to calculate how many carousels we have. So if we use slides.length, it's going to B3, right? Because we have three carousels in this instance. But in arrays, we always start at zero. So that's why we subtract one from here. Because even though we have three of them, it's going to be zero, one, and then two. So right now, all of this just equals the number two. And then we have a current variable right here that just stores whatever current slide we're on. So slide zero, like I said, is going to be slide one. 
So how do we display a certain slide? Notice when we first started up, it says start on slide one. It says this dot slide and in parentheses, this dot current. So slide is actually a prototype function of this carousel object right down here. So you can see we're grabbing the carousel object, this main object here, and adding on a function called slide to that. And it takes a parameter of index. So in this case, we're passing through zero because zero is what this current equals, which would be slide one. So now index right here equals zero because that's what we passed in. And the first thing it does is a little check to make sure that whatever number we pass in here actually exists. So we actually have that slide. So if it's greater or equal to zero, and if it's less than or equal to the total, then you can do this. Otherwise, just give it an alert that says this slide doesn't exist. It's either they tried to put in a negative number or they put in five and we only have four slides, etc. The next thing you'll see is that it calls the function stop and that is right up here. All this does is clear the timeout in case we have an interval going and I'll explain this a little bit in the future. Um, but this carousel can have it so that you can auto play your slides every one second, every two seconds, etc. So this is just if you go to a certain slide, stop the stop it from playing and stay on that slide. So now we have a for loop that starts at the first slide and goes to the last slide that we have available, adding one each time. So this for loop is just going to start at zero, go one, two, three, etc. But if the loop that we're currently on equals whatever slide we're trying to go to, so in this instance we're trying to go to slide zero, remember? So that would be actually the first loop of this. So if the slide we're trying to go to equals the current loop, then I want to display that element so you can use inline block or block. Um, otherwise, for all the other elements in your slides, don't display them. And this is how we get the effect of only one item displaying at a time. So in my HTML code, I can actually create a button here. And this button can just say go to slide one or go to slide whatever. And then on the on click, you want to type out your carousel object name. So numbers dot and then the function name. So the function name is slide, as you can see here, dot slide. So we're going to do numbers, which is the object dot slide, and then just put in what slide you want to go to. So go to slide one would be at zero. And if we wanted to go to the third slide, that would be, so let's put this at three, then the index of that would be two. So now let's save this and run it. All right, so now let's break this up a little and then run this. So as you can see here, now I can click on go to slide three and it goes to three and I can go to one, three, one, etc. If you wanted to go to slide two, you would just put one in here. Now we know how the slide function works. So let's go up and learn how the next function works. So to call that in your button, all you need to do is type out next and then let's just call this next and save it and run it. And here is our next button. So now we can click next. And as you can see, it goes to the next element in our carousel. And when it gets to the end, it loops back around to the beginning. So how does this work? What we do here is remember we have this current variable and this stores whatever slide we're currently on. So this is a simple if statement that checks to see if whatever slide we're currently on is the last slide. So if the current slide equals the last slide, then I want to go back to slide zero. If it doesn't, so say it's at slide zero or it's at slide one, then go ahead and add one. So this is going to update the current variable to be whatever slide we're currently on. Again, we call the stop function in case we have intervals going when we don't want them to overlap and mess up. And then after that, we go to the current slide. So you notice here, this slide dot current slide goes to the first slide because that's what it's on. Um, but as soon as we click next, this current turns into slide one. And then we go to slide one. The next time we click the button, it's going to be two. And then we're going to do this slide two and it'll go down to this function and then, you know, display two, but don't display everything else. Now here is the interval section in case you wanted to, to run on a loop. I'll talk about that later. Let's go to the previous now. So now we want a button to go to the previous slide. So let's go ahead and create that. And then for the function, just put your object name dot previous 
and then you're good so let's change this to previous button and run this now we have next you'll notice with the previous one when we get to one and we click it again it rolls back to the end so let's see how this works so back in our carousel object in the previous as soon as we click the previous button we're going to check if the current slide is on slide zero so before we checked to see if it's on the last slide now we're going to check to see if it's on the first slide if it is on the first slide then set the current slide to the last slide that way we can loop back to the end of it if it isn't so say it's on slide one or two or whatever then just subtract one from that so we're just doing the opposite of what this one is doing all right now let's talk about the loop so notice these two are the same exact thing what it does is first off check to see if the interval you put into your function is an integer so it first checks to see if it's a number and then if you do a modulus one of a number and it returns zero that means it has no decimal places right because there's no remainders of it so this part isn't super necessary to check to see if it's an integer all you really need is to make sure it's a number but because we're dealing with milliseconds here you shouldn't need to get more precise than one millisecond like so i just left it as being requirement to be both an integer and a number otherwise the interval won't work so first off let's use it so let's say let's have a play button right here all right now to make these play all you have to do is add an interval inside of these so for example you want to play the carousel forward at a rate of one second per slide then this is in milliseconds so a thousand equals a second and if you click this back one you want to play your carousel backwards at a rate of half a second if you click play previous then it goes backwards at a rate of half a second as you can see much faster than the forward one let's add another button this one is just going to be called stop and as you've noticed we've already used this in our code before so now let's go ahead and refresh play and anytime we want to stop it just click stop and it'll stop the carousel so back to the code and how it works now what this does is have a variable called run and it sets a timeout has an anonymous function that just calls the next function as you can see dot next with the interval that we already had so all it's doing is calling itself every however many seconds so right here this comma this highlighted word where my mouse is right here this will tell the script when to call the next function now you may be wondering what the context is for why didn't i just put this dot next the keyword this like say allows you to connect all your functions basically to your main carousel but as soon as we go inside of a function and then go inside another function like set timeout then this loses its context basically which is why I decided to name this context so if I just had this dot next it only be looking inside of here so before we dive deeper into this function as long as we just have a global variable outside of it called whatever we want then it will keep that value and we can call the next a little bit tedious but that's what you have to do when you use set timeout or set interval on the previous one we're doing the exact same thing nothing changes except like say we're calling previous to stop playing all I did was do clear timeout and this dot run so you notice we set our timeout to equal this dot run and that just allows us to stop it at any point so we're almost done now let's talk about this container ID here so you can use this regardless of whether you have multiple carousels but it's going to help you group specific carousels together so for example so this is just gonna be a previous and a next button and then let me go ahead and refresh this and this looks kind of cluttered I want these two to be by themselves and then I want these three to be by themselves so all I have to do is add the class carousel to all my buttons and hit save and run it but now they all disappear that's because if we don't specify a container it's just going to grab all the carousels at once so instead I'm gonna do two carousels so how to do this is to to wrap them in some kind of container so I'm gonna do a div and let's just call this numbers and then close this out and then let's create another section for our button so let's have div right here and put an ID to this and let's call this the the buttons 
So now these are wrapped up, but it doesn't change anything. To separate these out into two carousels, we have to specify the ID inside here. So this one is going to be numbers because numbers right here is that ID. And then let's create another carousel called uh, buttons. And the ID for that is right here, BTNS and save and go. So now, as you can see here, I have my numbers carousel and my buttons carousel right here. But now I can't access all my buttons. Simple enough, all you have to do is create a button or event and just do on click and simply do buttons dot next. So I'm just going to call this more options. So now I'm going to rerun this and now I have a third button. And when I click this, it cycles through all my buttons. So now I can do next, cycle it, and then it'll do this one, go to the stop one, and that. Cycling through each button is also tedious. I wanted these three to be grouped together and then these three. Just wrap the elements in a div or something and put the class of carousel on the div itself, but not on the buttons. So here, the, the class right here, I'm going to get rid of that class here and the carousel class here and then end this div and then close out of that div that way the buttons aren't being split up into carousel objects just these two divs are so now i'm going to run this again and as you can see buttons are grouped together now i have two carousels one of them is right here div numbers and it has three carousel objects in it the other one is div of buttons and it has two carousel objects in it, but each of those have two, and this one has three. The next one could have nothing in it, five things in it, etc. All that matters is whatever has the carousel class on it becomes each slide. You could even wrap it in a table or a table cell or anything else. Just wrap it in something and give whatever you're wrapping it in an ID. So when you create your carousel, that ID will create a boundary for your carousel object. So back here, you can see document.getElementById and everything in that element that we got by that ID, all the carousels inside of buttons we're going to grab. So that's it. One last thing to note before I go is that the elements inside your carousel don't, need, don't have to be the same. Like say you could have an input box on one. Notice it's one here, then it turns into an input box, then it goes to three, back to one etc. So it doesn't matter what elements you have, just put the class of carousel on them and you're golden. I know this video was super long, apologies. I really wanted to explain everything just so that no matter your skill level, you could understand it. Um, I will be creating another video on how to add animations in between each slide, and I'll try to keep that one a lot shorter. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.